Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So uh, today we continue on with our uh, Maxitronics 10 in 1 project lab. Today we'll be doing experiment number six. Uh, this is the one transistor radio with diode. So this uh, particular circuit um, uses a diode um, as part of the reception and then uses the transistor as the amplifier. Um, I, I don't completely understand this circuit, but um, uh, we'll put it together uh, over here in the booth and, uh, and we'll see how we go. So uh, this is the third um, uh, radio circuit. The previous two we couldn't get going, so let's see how we go with this one. Pop you over to the booth and we'll put this guy together. Here we are in the booth. So uh, we're just going to put together um, <clears throat> our next project, which is uh, circuit number six, the uh, one transistor radio with diode. So we'll just take out the, uh, <coughs> the old cables here. Cables. I suppose they are cables. I think usually they just call it hookup wire, don't they? Hookup wire. Uh, um, they're good. I think that they're solid core. If they're not solid core, they're um, they're well tinned on the ends. I think they're solid core. Now, let's throw you over to the book cam and we'll have a look at the schematic. So this is the uh, circuit number six, one transistor radio with diode. This radio uses a diode for detection and a transistorized audio stage, thus really improving signal sensitivity. The tuning circuit is similar to one used in circuit number five, but the broadcast station signals are now detected by the diode so that low level audio signals are developed across the resistor. Since the resistor is in the transistor input circuit, the audio frequencies are amplified by the transistor and transferred from the transformer to the earphone. If a good antenna is used and the ground connection is made properly, you will be pleasantly surprised by the excellent reception you get from this one transistor radio. We've got our wiring checklist with, uh, what's that, 12 uh, wires? and uh, there's the, the cabling diagram on the top right and then the schematic on the bottom right. Uh, we've got an antenna and a ground with the tuning capacitor. We've got the diode and we're using the 0 0.05 microfarad ceramic capacitor and the 470k resistor. We're using the transformer uh, which is coupled to the earphone and a, a transistor that's an NPN transistor and a 9 volt power source. So uh, let's put this guy together. Now I'll just uh, I'll throw you over to uh, here and you can watch as we uh, as we make the circuit. So uh, the first thing to do is two to three. I tell you, two to three seems to be a very common way to start these circuits. It's been the same start for the last three circuits. All right, and then uh, three to six. Three to six. We use red for that. Oh, one, two, three. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Three to six. And four to nine, and four and nine. So that's just connecting the uh, aerial um, antenna coil to the uh, germanium diode. <coughs> that's uh, number nine. And then we've got five to seven. That's an easy short one here, connecting the antenna to the tuning capacitor. And then we've got six to 12, uh, which is connecting the tuning coil to the emitter of the NPN transistor. So let's just confirm 6 to 12, that's correct. And then we've got 8 to 19. 8 to 19, that's hooking our germanium diode up with our uh, 0 0.05 microfarad ceramic capacitor. It's 8 to 19. And then we've got uh, 10 to 18. 10 to 18. <coughs> that's uh, connecting the base of our NPN transistor over to our ceramic capacitor, 10 to 18. <coughs> now, it's I'm still learning about all this sort of stuff, but the thing about capacitors is they uh, they don't pass DC, they block DC, but uh, they do pass AC. Um, so if you've got a signal that's oscillating, it can go through a capacitor. Uh, I'm still learning about that, of course. So that was 10 to 18, and we've got 10 to 22. So what are we hooking in here? Oh, we're putting in a resistor now. 10 to 22. 10 to 22. This is the 470k uh, resistor. 470k is actually quite a lot. It's it's uh, it's half a mega ohm, isn't it? It's quite a big resistance. So uh, that's the base of the MPN transistor to the uh, 470k resistor. And then we've got 11 to 13. 11 to 13. 
Where is 13? Okay, so we're sending the collector of the NPN transistor down to the top end of the transformer's wire. You know, I, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to say, but uh, I really just don't understand transformers very well yet. Get transistors, I'm kind of getting my head around. You, you know, you control the current that flows from the collector through to the emitter by applying a, a voltage on the base. So, uh, and that way that the base can control uh, the, the circuit as an amplifier. So I kind of understand um, transistors. And similarly, diodes, they're kind of easy to understand. Like they allow voltage to, or current to flow in one direction and not the other direction. Um, but when it comes to inductors like the antenna or the transformer, I really just don't understand how they work. I, I don't know what value or, or, or function the transformer provides that enables it in this circuit to drive the earphone. I mean, I just don't understand how it works. And I'm hoping that if I just do enough projects, eventually I'll figure that out. Did you ever hear that quote from Richard, Fe Richard Feynman? And he said, uh, in physics, we don't understand things. We just get used to them <laughs> or something along those lines. And I think that that's, uh, that's what I'm hoping will happen with me. Um, is that even if I don't understand transformers, at least I'll get used to them. <laughs> so uh, that was 11 to 13, and then we've got 12 to 27. What are we doing there? Ah, oh, it's power time. 12 to 27 is putting the uh, the emitter of the uh, transistor onto the negative rail of the power, which is basically the ground. So, uh, yep, that will allow um, voltage, or sorry, that will allow current to flow through the transistor and back over to ground. Um, and that, that current at the moment will be coming in from the transformer um, and it will be uh, amplifying whatever signal we put on the base here. Uh, so that was 27 and we got 15 to 23. Where's 23? Okay, it's on the other side here. So let's do 15. Now I got this wrong last time. I put the wrong... Uh, anyway, I didn't get it wrong this time. So that's connecting the transformer to the, uh, to the 470k ohm resistor. And then the last wire is 23 to 26, which is just wiring in our positive power line to, where's 23? Oh, okay, it's on the other side of that uh, resistor there. Fascinating. Just confirming that's 23 to 26. Yes, that's right. All right. Well, that's this circuit assembled. So uh, the next step is to take it over to the uh, bench uh, we'll have to wire in the um, we'll have to wire in the earphone, and we'll have to wire in the uh, aerial. Oh, and speaking of that, I had a comment on the channel from yesterday's video uh, about uh, how the UHF slash VHS roof aerial um, isn't any good for AM signals. Um, so, uh, if that's true, then maybe what I should do is just what they suggest in the book, which is use this long um, green cable as the antenna. Um, and then I'll just use the uh, I'll use the ground uh, from the uh, from the aerial, um, and uh, see if I can pull that out. Sort of. Uh, I'm going to use the ground uh, from the roof antenna because the other ground goes through my uh, through my elect electric wrist uh, grounding thing, and it beeps when there's no connection and anyway well we've got options let's just put it that way um so i'm just untangling this here look at this it's a, it's, a, it's an enormous mess so uh, i'm gonna have to strip a little bit of the insulation off so that we can connect this long wire as the uh the antenna and the other thing i'm going to do when i've got you over the bench in just a minute is i'm going to uh, plug in um or turn on a um an old radio that i've got and we'll see if we can pick up any am stations uh, at all because i don't even know what they what they broadcast on the, on the AM uh, radio around here. Who knows? I, 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 for all I know, AM radio could be obsolete and it's all digital FM or something these days. I don't know. Anyway, let's stop this video and I'll take you over the um, bench and we'll continue. Here we are on the bench. So uh, <coughs> this is um, circuit number six, which we've just put together in the booth. Um, I just need to grab a wire cutter. And uh, this one looks pretty good, doesn't it? It goes all the way up to 30 gauge. So I've got a 30 gauge wire cutter here. I just need to strip a little bit of the um, of the insulation off our long wire, which is going to serve as our aerial. So I'm just going to run that over there. Let's just go over there. And uh, we just need a little bit of wire off the end here. Well, not a little bit of wire, rather a little bit of insulation off the end so that we can plug him in to the circuit. So let's see if we can just do that. There we go. 
Now this is stranded wire, it's not um, solid core. So I might just give him a bit of a twist. I could tin it. Should I turn the soldering iron and tin it? See how we go without tinning it. And if there's uh, too much fraying, um, we can tin it. But uh, I won't turn the soldering iron on just yet. Alright, so let's plug him in there. Now the other thing I said I'd do, and I think this would be a good idea. Oh, by the way, I'm going to use this uh, onto the roof area. I'm going to plug, plug this into the roof area to get the ground. I do believe that the shielded the shielding on the um, on the roof area is, uh, and this is the roof area, you know, you might be able to see it up there. So um, I believe that the, the roof area, um, that the shielding goes to ground, and I hope it does. So then we've got a ground here uh, from the area. Uh, so we've got our, our long AM uh, uh, wire to use as the, uh, as the antenna. And the other thing I wanted to do, I'll just grab this. I've got this old radio here. I'll just see if we can give him a go. Can you see that? So uh, I haven't used this lately. Um, there's on. I oh, know that's on for. It's got a. It's got a light in it. That's kind of handy, isn't it? Especially if you're out camping. So uh, anyway, that that seemed to work, didn't it? So there must be batteries in this thing. What have we got in there? Yep. They seem to be in fairly good shape too. It's just uh, three uh, double A's. I'll just check that they haven't, uh, oh, yep, they've leaked. All right, well, I'll put in some new batteries. Oh, look at that, that's really, that's really yuck. Yep, yucko, well, I'm glad I checked that. So I'm gonna call those dead. I, uh, I, I don't like putting batteries into landfills, so I, I keep my old batteries in this e-waste container, which I get properly disposed uh, every now and again. So these are, uh, these are gone. That one is actually probably okay. I'll get my battery tester and if they're still working, I'll just clean them up and, uh, and put them in my old batteries drawer. I, I do have an old batteries drawer. I'll show you that in just a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do is some, uh, some isopropyl over here. Now, it looks like water, but it's not water. And we're gonna need some of these, which are uh, cotton tips or Q-tips. I think our American friends call them Q-tips. I don't know if Q-tips is a brand name or a product name or what, I just don't know. So I'm just gonna um, give the ends of these batteries a bit of a, a once over. This particular battery looks just fine to me. Um, we'll test if he's working or not. This one on the other hand does not look fine at all. In fact, I'm not even gonna try with that one. And this one, it actually looks like it's in pretty good shape too. So let's give him a bit of a squeeze and uh, Give the ends a bit of a go. Oh, there's a little bit of crop, crop, crop. I think that's half crap and half croft, crop. I think I've invented a word. So I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just giving this battery a bit of a once over with the isopropyl and the Q-tip. Let's see if I can uh, salvage him. Now I might give it a bit of a spray in there as well. Yeah, that's really yuck in there. I don't understand how it works. You know, sometimes you see these batteries and they leak and sometimes they don't leak at all. And I don't understand the chemistry that's involved in this sort of salt growing out of a battery. I mean, how does it even happen? I don't know. Batteries are kind of remarkable, aren't they? Battery tech has even improved quite a lot over my lifetime. So, it used to be uh, the old um, uh, alkaline batteries. They, they, they had all sorts of annoying effects. I suppose they still do. I don't know if they managed to make alkalines better than they used to, but they, they had that memory effect for the rechargeable batteries and you had to, I don't know, I don't know what technology those rechargeable batteries are actually made out of. I don't know if they're alkaline or something else, not sure. So I've just been giving this a bit of a scrub. That's a real, that's a real mess down in there. Yucko. Can you see that? That's really crafty. Now I've got this stuff and I, I want to buy more of it. I, I learned it off my mate Adrian Black over on Adrian's Digital Basement, um, which you should definitely check out if you're into electronics and uh, computers and retro gear. Um, he uses this stuff called Deoxit and I think they sell it in America. I don't know if it's even really on the market in Australia. And I'm planning to get myself some. I, I actually did buy a cheapo little bit of it, um, 
but it was it came in a very disappointingly small package. Huh? Um, and I'll show you that in just a second. See if the uh, the deoxid might help with these uh, battery terminals. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but that that spring terminal is black. It's getting a bit better. I think we've improved it. All right. Let's just go over this until the uh, the alcohol dries out. And once the alcohol's dried out, we can try some of that deoxid. I actually think the uh, the isopropyl has damaged this uh, this plastic on the uh, on the radio here. I might hit it with some uh, maybe some vinegar. This is vinegar. Now I don't know if this is a good idea, but you see that little corrosive stuff. I'm just going to try and clean off the uh, um, the isopropyl because I think the isopropyl uh, damaged the uh, the plastic here. I don't know if vinegar is the right thing for the job. I might hit it with some soap and water too. I've got some soap and water floating around. Uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, the um, the isopropyls picked up some of the um, the veneer of the plastic and uh, and tarnished it a little bit. It's just aesthetics, though. I don't think it's any particularly big deal. The uh, the vinegar works quite differently to the isopropyl. The isopropyl uh, just basically evaporates. Um, the uh, vinegar is more like water, it just sort of clumps up and stays there. So I might have to um, go over it and over it and over it to dry it all out. I wasn't expecting this uh, little detour into uh, radio uh, cleansing. I'm going to hit it with the... Uh, I don't know, I've got disinfectant and I've got soapy water. This is soapy water, so I'm just going to um, hit this with a little bit of so soapy water, not too much. And here we go. Yep, you can see it's all soapy soapy. Yeah. Yep, this was just soapy water. I think it actually helped get that uh um, isopropyl tarnish sort of off, so that's good. Um, but uh, again, this was um, water, soap and water, and you don't usually want to put water on your electronics. <sighs> Seems to have come back pretty good though, doesn't it? I'm pretty happy with that. And I didn't put too much soap on there, so I can basically just sponge it up with these uh, Q-tips. Do a couple more of those. Actually, I might. Uh, I might just. Uh, I'll tell you. What have we got here? Let's throw it over there for a second. Um, and uh, I'll have some of my coffee. Now I've got this. I'll show you that over here. This is a container full of cotton balls and let's grab one of them out should be able to dry this up pretty good <sighs> yeah well that uh, that isopropyl really did do a little bit of damage it's uh, it's it's obviously eaten away at the veneer on this plastic um, and as the uh, the fluid that I just flip, flipped the radio on, and it's fascinating. It uh, it seemed to work. How did the how did the batteries how, how did it work? I don't know. The re the radio worked, and there's no batteries in in it. So maybe there's a I don't know. Maybe there's another battery in there. I don't know. <sighs> All right. <sighs> so. Can you see the damage that's happened along there? It's a bit disappointing, isn't it? All right, well, I'll just give this a little bit more of a, a dry out in the corners. And I did say I'd try the deoxid, didn't I? And this spring terminal still looks like it could do with it, so uh, 
Let's give that a go. <sighs> so I, uh, I was <clears throat> perhaps I should have done this uh, radio preparation earlier, uh, but I didn't. So sorry to keep you waiting. Now um, I'll show you this deoxid stuff that I've got. This is it here. This is uh, G Series Deoxid Gold G100L 100% solution. Enhances, conditions, seals, and protects gold plated electronic connections. I don't think these are gold plated. So let's see what's in the other one. The D Series Deoxid D100L. Removes oxidation, improves contact, protects services. Rejuvenate and improve performance of metal electronic connections and contacts. So that's what this is. Sorry, you couldn't see that there. So uh, let's just uh, take him out. I think he's got a little brush he does. All right. And let's just brush some of this stuff on here. And uh, maybe it'll help. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know how much you use or how you apply it. Never used this before in my life. As I said, I, I, I learned about deoxid from Adrian Black at Adrian's Digital Basement. And he seemed to have a spray a spray can of it, I think. Um, and I'd rather have that than mess around with this, um, this brush still. Who knows? I don't know. And this is the one that I want mostly uh, to fix. The, the other contacts didn't have as much uh, cruft on them as that one did. So, let's just round him out with some brushing. <sighs> All right, well, now there was the question of battery power. If I put that on, look at that, that's still working. So there's obviously some sort of uh, rechargeable battery uh, in there as well. Isn't that fascinating? There's another battery in there. So I, I don't know what, um, I don't know what you have uh, these batteries for. Uh, if the other batteries uh, in there. I guess it's just backup power. It's the only real explanation. I was making a joke today about redundancies on IRC. There's a quote from Winston Churchill about, uh, you know, if you want to make a point, don't be clever or subtle. Make your point and then make it again and then make it a third time. And he says, a tremendous whack. A tremendous whack. All right. Well, um, might as well throw you back over here and let's go looking for batteries. This is where I keep my batteries in here. And we're going to need three triple A's. That's one, two, three. Oh, they're not triple A's, they're double A's. Three double A's. So it's nice to have batteries when you need them. Right back over to the bench. So let's just put these batteries in. Uh, we got one, and obviously uh, we learned that these batteries aren't even necessary, um, but we're going to put them in anyway, and that'll be that. Now the other thing that we'll do just before we uh, continue is we'll throw the uh, the old batteries into the um, to the uh, battery meter and see what they say. And this says, "Oh, it's just on good. It's just on good." So uh, not completely shot yet. And the same for this one. Now I do keep. Uh, let me get rid of the e-waste and I'll show you my my old batteries drawer this is my old batteries drawer and when I have dead batteries uh, that um, that I'm replacing I just put the uh, the old ones that I'm no longer using uh, in in here um, so if I want to if I want to test on a on a on a on a dud well a, a almost dead battery but see these batteries aren't good enough to use in your appliance but they are good enough to do like a silly little electronics experiment with so I keep them just in the offhand that I need you know a, a failing battery rather than wasting a good battery so uh, I do actually use them from time to time you might think I'm pulling your leg but uh, it is handy to keep your your not quite dead batteries um, so. Here we are with our radio. Now we're gonna put it on. There's shortwave, AM, FM, and MP3. Now what we're gonna be doing is AM, and let's do that together now. Interesting, nothing. Why nothing? Shortwave. wave. 
didn't it? I, I accidentally bumped it just earlier and it started. Oh, there we go. All right, that's FM. That's AM. Let's give it some aerial. I don't know. All right, there's the aerial up there. And it's on AM. That's shortwave. That's AM. So we're on the AM band. Just nothing, is there? Terrible. Well, that might explain why our radio circuit doesn't work. Okay. Picked up something there. <laughs> All right, well, we've managed to find one AM station, uh, but gee, there, there wasn't a lot of, uh, of stations coming through, was there? So I'm not sure what to tell you about that or really what we should expect when we try and tune our, uh, our radio. So anyway, we've got our AM cable on in the corner here. Uh, we've got our ground wire connected. So we just need to plug in our power. Now, um, let me show you that again. Uh, there we go. All right, so um, I'll just power up our power supply. He should be coming online. There he is. Now he's already set at nine volts, which is what we want. So that's good. Throw it back over here. Now we're gonna um, put the, the power in. So um, we put uh, positive here and negative here. All right, so if we throw our uh, power on, oh, actually, no, we're gonna hook in our uh, earphone. This is our earphone here. So, uh, that goes to 14 and 15. This is 14, and this is 15. All right. And there's nothing coming out of the earphone yet. So. Power on. Well, it's very loud, very loud. Something's changed. It was working, and it was very loud. Not working, working, it was just making a racket. There it goes. Yeah, this isn't picking up a single thing. Nothing, it's just the same. The tuning capacitor seems to have absolutely no effect. Touching the base of the transistor affects the sound. The tuning capacitor doesn't change the nature of the output. It's just this humming, chirping kind of thing. You can probably hear it if I put it up there. Can you hear that? I think the microphone's in there somewhere. So uh, I'm not sure what to say. It's drawing five milliamps. Five milliamps. Not very much power at all. Uh, yeah, nothing. So um, I suppose we could have a look at, uh, at the signal that's coming uh, through uh, the, um, the earphone here. I'm going to plug this guy on here. All right. And I don't think we're going to find anything particularly interesting there. Now we figured out the other day, you click measure, add channel one, channel one and horizontal uh, frequency done. All right. Oh, that's interesting. That signal is, um, well, it's not consistent, is it? Not at all. And it's reporting. If I speak, it seems to affect that signal. 
I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and see if that signal settles down. Yeah, well, it's picking up something, isn't it? I I, uh, I don't know what's happening. If I change the tuning capacitor, does that have any effect on that? Nothing appreciable. I suspect that's some sort of noise, some electromagnetic noise from the room. Maybe it's my external hard drives working or USB cables transmitting data, or maybe it's power line stuff. I don't know. But uh, changing the uh, the tuning capacitor doesn't seem to have much effect on that, uh, on that signal at all. So... Uh, I wonder if I could just see what's happening if I put that on here and press auto. Yeah, it affected the sound quite a lot. I don't know what I've really done there. Anyway. Oh, whatever it was, it, it, uh, it hasn't stopped now. Let's go back and have a look at that signal again. That's changed a bit, hasn't it? Still around that two kilohertz frequency. 2 kilohertz. If you look at the uh, markings on this AM radio, it says that the AM frequencies are from 53 kilohertz to 160 kilohertz times 10. Oh wow, that must be, uh, okay, I don't know what that time 10 means. Uh, and shortwave is even less. <clears throat> oh no, no, shortwave is megahertz. FM is megahertz. AM is kilohertz. 53 kilohertz to 160 kilohertz. So if we're looking there at a sign signal that's being reported as about two kilohertz, um, that's not an AM signal according to this radio, is it? So what would be two kilohertz in my environment here? I don't know. If you know, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. Um, is there anything more to talk to you about here? Uh, oh, did, did we, do we have a look at the, the thermal cam? Yeah, what got hot? Something got hot. Uh, what's hot? Oh, the, uh, the thermal cam's turned itself off. Um, I'm just booting the thermal cam. Uh, I think I'm going to have to close the video and start it up again, so just bear with me for one second. All right, well, I'm back. So what I've done is I've just hooked up the, uh, the thermal cam, and you can see that the, the component that's getting hot is this one this one so that's the transistor the uh, the MPN transistor um, I think this is just uh, the key so that's just reflecting some heat um, but the the, the transistor is uh, 33.8 degrees Wow so there we go and that must be where the the power in this circuits being consumed eh? I don't think the uh, earphone is hot. Is the earphone hot? There's a little bit of heat on that earphone. It says, uh, yeah, not as much as the transistor. So um, we've noticed the MPN transistor get hot. Um, there, there is about, uh, if I show you um, here, over here, um, we can see that it's drawing 5 milliamps, which is 0 0.005 amps. So that's 5 milliamps currently being consumed uh, from this circuit at 9 volts or 8.98 volts and uh, the tuning capacitor doesn't even seem to affect the output sound so I, I'm not sure what to tell you about that uh, we've used the long aerial moving the aerial around doesn't seem to have any effect on the sound at all um, the oscilloscope continues to show this odd you know 2 kilohertz ish signal uh, across the um, across the Headphone. Um, I, uh, I don't have anything more to tell you. So that, that was our third radio experiment. Uh, and again, uh, no luck. We haven't been able to, to, uh, to um, get a successful um, radio working at all after having three attempts. So that's, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? What's next? Um, I'll just turn the power on this guy off because it's making a lot of noise and annoying me. Okay, so up next we actually have a transmitter. Now it's kind of tempting, isn't it, to um, to build the uh, to, to build the transmitter and try and detect it with our actual radio, but uh, we won't do that. We're going. I don't know what CW stands for. Does it mean continuous wave? CW. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll research that and I'll let you know in the next video. So the, the next video is going to be the wireless CW transmitter, and I've got this old radio which can do FM, AM, and shortwave. Um, and as you know, we just put fresh batteries in this guy, so that uh, 
that should come in handy. We'll use this guy um, to try and pick up a signal from our, our, our radio transmitter, which the next circuit will be. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to say. This is the, the third uh, radio. Um, I have to say, though, um, there wasn't much in the way of AM signals in, in this room. I don't know if it's to do with maybe there's some Faraday cage thing going on with this environment. I don't know. Um, actually, I, sp I suppose we could have tried with the roof antenna. It did say in here that, uh, that the roof antenna would be a really good thing to use. It says here, um, you can extend the reception range of your radios up to 100 times by simply attaching the antenna wire to the house antenna jack and the ground wire to the ground connection on the antenna jack. You create a really giant dipole antenna and increase sensitivity significantly. And then it says there's an electric shock hazard. And adult supervision is required when performing these connections. You can apply this tip on all the radio projects to increase the reception sensitivity. So that's what the book says. It says that you can use the uh, roof aerial. But my friend who commented yesterday on, uh, on, on, on the previous video said that because it's VHF and UHF, the house antenna won't help uh, with this AM radio. I'll tell you what, though, just before we close out this video, let's just jump back over to the, uh, to the bench and let's power this guy back up. Um, and you can hear the, the noise coming out there. And let's just try just one last time uh, with the roof aerial and see if that makes any difference. Okay. Okay, that's amazing. We've, we've actually picked up an audio signal. I can hear someone talking. I've got music. Can you hear it? Some sort of music. And that, uh, that two kilohertz signal, that's an audio signal. So there's two questions uh, that we have um, that I will research. Um, uh, what have I done with my pencil? Where is my pencil? Uh, uh, there it is. Now, um, uh, uh, audio uh, frequency. So I've got to ask the question, what is an audio frequency? It looks like a few kilohertz. Um, and then we'll put AM uh, frequency, which according to the, um, the, the radio here is 53 kilohertz to 1.6 megahertz. Um, but we'll, we'll confirm that. So audio frequency and radio frequency. But I can hear music. Can you hear the music? And you can see the music on the um, on the oscilloscope. Can you hear that? Yeah. I hope you can hear it. I can hear it. It sounds it sounds like fun. Is it piping? It might be piping. It sounds it sounds like good fun old music, doesn't it? All right. Well, I'm going to call that in the end mission successful. That's just amazing. So uh, yeah, can you hear it? I can still hear it. <laughs> so isn't that great? In the, we, we, we snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Uh, this was the third radio circuit. Um, when I tried it with the, the aerial that it comes with, which is this shoddy um, long green uh, cable thing, that didn't work at all. But when I, I used the roof aerial and ran that through to the ground and ran that through to the antenna, um, I started picking up music. Isn't that awesome? So uh, I'm not sure what, what we've managed to tune into there, but uh, it, it works. Wow. So that's that's really exciting. And um, it's nice to land there with a the victory uh, in the end. So next next one, we'll build the transmitter and we'll see how we go with that. So we're very happy with this video. Thanks for watching. If you want to see what happens next, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.